Hello guys, Colonel Ninny here. To create spectacular results like this, we often forget that there's an interaction between the pilot and the aircraft. And of course, it's the player's control inputs that make this all possible. So having the right equipment and the right setup is important. Some time ago, I released a video called Colonel Ninny's IL-2 Boss Control Setup and Key Mapping. And it's based on my experience with my Logitech Wingman 3D Pro. But bear in mind, for 45 bucks, I used it for over a thousand hours on IL-2. And in the end, I replaced it because it was getting a bit floppy and loose. It got to the point where squeezing the trigger actually pulled the nose off the target. I was fortunate enough to have a friend that donated both the uh, Thrustmaster 1600 and the Cytec 52 system, which I've used for 250 hours. So based on that experience, I'm going to make some suggestions on how you can set your system up so it makes it as easy and logical to play as possible. Let's start with the T1600. Personally, I really like this stick. It has a lot of programmable buttons and I use most of them. I mark them for easy identification in a logical sequence with wheel and flap controls on the left and engine controls on the right. On the bottom we have the ground control wheel and brake commands. Left brake, right brake and tail wheel lock. So I'll advance the throttle with my thumb and keep my wrist steady and use the brakes and the tailwheel lock accordingly. The next three buttons are the flaps up, flaps down and landing gear up and down buttons. On the right side we have the engine temperature controls. Green is coolant radiators open and closed. Yellow is oil coolers open and closed. The yellow and green is the engine cowl flaps on radial engines like the A20, P47 and LA5. On the top of the stick we have the zoom out view, the cannon fire button, and then the zoom in gun sight view. The pitch trim pressing back for nose up and forward for nose down. It's a good sturdy stick and it fits my hand well. Good feel to it, no dead spots. I got so used to using my mouse in my left hand as my way to view the world without track IR that I still use the control wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. As you might imagine, my mouse is fairly simple. I think there's good value in having a mouse with the numerous programmable buttons so you don't have to use your keyboard. Let's look at my keyboard setup, which is really my default to using any stick. Again, I use color coding on the keys so they're easy to recognize. The red is the mixture control, the blue is the propeller pitch, the green controls the engine coolant, the green and yellow controls the engine oil temperature, and on radial engines it opens and closes the outlet cowls. To the left are the smaller green and yellow, and they represent the inlet cowls for the radial engines. And using the 1 and 2 keys, 1 is less and 2 is more. White is my B key for bombing the shit out of things. And the blue, control F, is for feathering the propeller. Blue is the same color for the prop stitch. And that brings us to the Cytec X52. It's a good solid stick with suction cups and blue lights and things, but uh, it doesn't have any programmable buttons. As the stick itself has no integral throttle, there is a second unit for the throttle quadrant. On the top we have zoom in and zoom out. We've got the gear up and down. We've got the flaps down, flaps up. Then we have the pitch trim. And then I have a knob that I don't use. On the bottom, the center one is bomb doors open and closed. Then there's left and right brakes. It has a really nice feeling in that it's very solid and there is a spring that you can adjust the tension on it. Then the standard cannon fire button and the machine gun trigger. We don't want to give the right hand too much to do because it's busy flying the aircraft. 
so it makes perfect sense to put a lot of controllable buttons on the throttle quadrant. This is the feather prop button, this is the mixture control, this is the bomb the shit out of things button, this one is dive brakes, on top is engine start and propeller RPM. The round one is important because that's my push to talk button. And the little rotary dial is unassigned. As are these two cool switches. You're going to need switches for intercoolers and turbochargers and superchargers. But for now I just use the keyboard defaults. And these three buttons are sort of stopwatch type functions which I don't use. This is not a sponsored video to compare control systems. Each one has its own pros and cons, but my preference is quite simple. I like the T1600 joystick, but I like to use it in conjunction with the Cytec throttle quadrant. This provides me with all the options that I need to get my job done. By the way, after 1200 hours of flying, I was gifted a Track IR. It makes a world of difference, gotta tell ya. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Keep practicing, get those skills up. See you out there. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please like it, or subscribe, or if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment. Thank you, guys.